Hey there, it's Simon Mannering from We First, and I'm lucky enough to be here with Daniel Flynn, who is the co-founder and managing director of Thank You, which is this really exciting social enterprise in Australia. So Daniel, um, nice to meet you, and I'd love to hear a little bit about what Thank You's doing. Yeah, so look, in its simplest form, we sell consumer goods uh, and give 100% of the profits to funding aid and development projects. Um, and we, we operate kind of in, in four categories. So we have where we, where we started, which was bottled water, where 100% of those profits funds water programs. Uh, we then moved into food, so muesli, granola, uh, and all profits from that, that that range funds our food programs, then into body care, so talking like premium hand washers, lotions, sanitizers, right. and now into the baby category, so diapers or nappies, depending on which part of the world you're from, that funds infant and maternal health programs. So it's an incredible business model. I mean, you give away 100% of your profits, so that, it drives goodwill which builds your business which yeah. then allows you to give away more profits correct correct so is the goal impact in and of itself you know outright that's what it's about or is it a, a kind of a whole reframing of the role of business and a kind of a new business model out there that everyone could adopt uh, look I, I think the goal is impact you know I, I we're, we're at this great conference today and, right. and, and you mentioned this great quote, um, I think it was yourself, gosh, it's going to get awkward, it could be someone else, oh my good, all could, good, but someone Go this it. morning talked about um, your mission, with, with a company, with rather a company. company, it was me, it was then you, we got I was away. listening, then you were so, listening, so, so, so based on that thinking, I mean, that, that is what, what thank you is, we're a mission that happens also to be a company, and, right. and, and so we are, you know, the vision is a world without extreme poverty. Yep. That's not our vision, that's a global goal. We see Thank You playing a really interesting role because uh, for too long, yes, extreme poverty exists, but so too does extreme consumerism. Right. We are spending so much money every single day on products and a lot of our profit individually right. as a consumer goes to the big multinationals. Thank You is a switch. It's saying, hey, we don't want your money. And everyone's like, yes, you do. And no, no, we, we don't want your money, we want your choice. You're going to buy hand wash anyway, choose Thank You helping global poverty and, and that's the starting point. It's a very, very powerful demonstration, the viability of a new model. I mean, you had an incredible launch with your book as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so look, everything we do at Thank You has been around challenging thinking. It's been a tough market. I mean, every category we're in is is, is crowded. We launched into, uh, into diapers literally eight months ago. We've now got 10% market share up against one of the biggest nappy companies in the world. And it's, it's groundbreaking, but our approach isn't simply make a great product, get it to market, because you're not really allowed to do that anymore. Right. The system's built different. Right. The big brands control, and the big retailers are saying, well, hang on a second, we're moving into home brand, we'll keep space for one or two big players. So thank you. Our ambition is, yeah, to change the world, empower consumers, <laughs> but that doesn't go far in the retail room. How did you win over retailers? How did you fight the inevitable resistance where people are like, Firstly, what is that business model? And yeah. secondly, why you? Why should we make an exception for you? Okay, so basically we couldn't get an exception to the rule. Right. So at year three and year five, these are two tipping points where we had to almost force an ex exception to the rule. Right. So everyone, most people are familiar with 7-Eleven as a retailer globally. Yep. In Australia, they are the leader in convenience stores. Right. We launched a video at year three. Said, hey everyone, for three years, no one said yes to our water. But two weeks from today, we're presenting to 7-Eleven Australia. And we're asking you to jump onto their Facebook wall. Say, 7-Eleven, if you stock Thank You Water, I'd buy it. And this consumer groundswell, right? So we had people singing, dancing, rapping, recording videos on their most powerful device in the world, the phone, and they're uploading that. Wow. And that, that, that created some friction. 7-Eleven, due to public support, demand, not sure, said yes. Uh, product outsold Evian and other brands from day one and it it proved to the retailer and us this works right and we we forced our way in you could you could say now I thought with market leading data and right. a big retail brand like 7-eleven we could take that to all the other retailers right and kind of go hey hey it's it working. worked here it's yeah. working yeah. no so the next two years no 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 from everyone and in Australia we have two major supermarkets uh, grocery stores, Coles and Woolworths, right. who have 70% market share. Right. Do up late. Year five, we launch a little video on YouTube. Hey everybody, uh, it's been five years and the big supermarkets have said no for five years, but in two weeks time we booked another meeting with both of them. This time we're not going alone, we want you to come with us. And we right. invited our community to again record videos, rap, sing, show your support. 
and during this campaign, the media went crazy because we we called it the Coles and Woolworths campaign, which is so you're calling out, you yeah. know, your prospective customers. Yeah, yeah. And so you put them in a difficult position. They either say yes and they're on board, or they say no and they get a lot of backlash. Yeah, and so people say to us, well, "Who do you think you are? What kind of arrogance is that for you as a brand?" And we're not a brand. We're not a product. We're a mission, and and unfortunately, the, the retailers we need them. Or fortunately, depends which way you look at it, because the consumers, our customers, shop there. So we have to go through them to get to the people. And if you're not going to come on board in five years amicably, that's okay. But we have a mission, and that's more important. Right. And so therefore, we and the the pinnacle moment of this campaign was we had helicopters that had these 10,000 square foot sign, "Dear Coles, thank you for changing the world." In brackets, if you say yes, and it flew over their head office for half an hour while we circled the other head office. This is almost like uh, guerrilla activism. The kind, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, we, we, we try and keep it really positive. So yep. if, you, if you, you know, were close to the campaign, it was all positive. And there right. were some very negative angles we could have spun. Yep. But we are a positive brand. Thank you. Thank you for making a difference. It's, it's not, um, you know. It's also assumptive. You know, you're kind of putting the onus on people to decide as consumers or as brands, you know, customers, are they going to embrace what you stand for? Yeah. Uh, and are there a lot of copycats out there now? I mean, it's always hard to maintain your market share when you're doing something disruptive. Yeah, I mean, we, we look at anyone in the social business space as good news, like, you right. know, not competition. Yeah. Because right. at the end of the day, you look at any big FMCG or CPG brand in the world or, or market, there are multiple major competitors. Yep. How cool would it be if there's a couple of big players that were all social businesses? Sure. Now that's another problem. We could do another interview one day when it's just social businesses owning right. the world. Right. But in, in, in this day and age right now, there's a couple of big companies. We all know who they are. Yep. And they, they're good at what they do and they own the space. So yeah. we need everyone cutting in. And um, you know, our book, chapter one, was really a invitation to people to say, hey, here's what we've learned. Um, in fact, the book is the first chapter of our journey. Right. Here's everything we've learned, and it's not, you know, not as much as you've learned, but no. it, it, it's 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 essentially how we've cracked the retail game, and we we're giving it to people. So yeah. And what? So what would you say if there was one or two or maybe three things that are really responsible for your success? Yeah. Beyond the integrity of your mission or the or the sure. priority of your mission, what would you say it would be? Okay. So look, there's a couple of things. I I think that um, we talk about momentum as you know momentum changes everything is this phrase thrown around internally right uh, it is not good enough anymore maybe it never was but I don't think it's good enough to just have a good idea um, and and even a good team around a good idea right because we had that right. and I think a lot of groups have that but it's this ability to create momentum right those campaigns they were actually momentum creators so that retailers went what? It's all happening. They had to we're listen. Gonna, we're going to miss out. Yep. See, it's FOMO. <laughs> How do you create FOMO? That right. fear of missing out. Yep. That's basically, a, a, without thinking about it, that's actually, in nine years, sums up our whole business. Our book launch ends up selling 20 times bestseller in the first year. Um, hit, hit bestseller status in the first two hours. Outsold every business book launch in the airports and was second to the Harry Potter book launch in the airport bookstore. Wow. Crazy stuff. And but but we're not a real big brand. The author certainly doesn't have much of a reputation. <laughs> yeah. And the book's title was Chapter One. That's it. There was no thank you chapter one. Learn how to build a social no right. chapter. We created this thing, and it was about uh, well fear of missing out. But we, we created something unique. Right. People saw it. Some bought into it because they're like, what the heck is this? Right. Others bought into it because they knew and then it, it kind of spiraled in a cool way out of control. And to do that, we again had to challenge convention. So the book has launched with a pay what you want price. So there's no RIP. So if somebody wants to support not only your mission, but the impact you're having in the world, where should they go? Where should they check out? Head to thankyou.co, uh, our website, and check out chapter one. Uh, if you're in other countries, read about it. Maybe one day we'll come to you. Um, and yeah, buy our products, spread the word online. And uh, yeah, hit us up on our social channels and be part of our, our next crazy few campaigns we plan to run. All right. Well, thank you for all that you're doing, for disrupting every business model that we thought couldn't be disrupted anymore, and most importantly, for having a really meaningful impact on the yeah. world. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. All right.